watching it's college game day. No Auburn versus Oregon. It's gonna be intense. This game is huge. Hey, it's a lot for the Pac-12, means a lot for the SEC. The Pac-12 is fast, and the SEC is physical. We are the SEC. And I think we have a lot to prove this year. The Pac-12 conference has a chip on their shoulder, period. They've not seen a defensive line like Auburn. It's just all about the trenches. It's a really great test. Auburn has a fantastic defensive line. They're physical players, and it won't be anyone like we've played before. It's a feisty defense. You know, from, from the D-line to the back end, it's a feisty defense. We bring our own type of speed. We don't have SEC speed. We have Pac-12 speed. And we know what, what Oregon offense brings to the table. Justin Herbert's the highly praised QB returning for his senior year. Justin Herbert was the first one to come out and say that he wanted to stay. So he really tied this group down and put the anchors down to make us all come back. He just have a great arm. He can run. And he's able to get outside the pocket and make plays with his feet. Also, throw the ball on the dime. Justin Herbert makes throws that surprise you. Very accurate. Always want to get the job done no matter what it takes. We know what he brings to the table. Touchdown, Oregon! It's a big time game. All eyes on you. You got to go out there and just play all the football. We're really looking forward to the challenge. This ain't no more about game. I will be ready. stop us. We're going to have a lot of fun here with fans and, of course, talking through week one of college football. Maria Taylor alongside David Pollock and Fitzy. Hey, guys. Aww, it's my first game day. I feel so, I'm so excited. <laughs> just did like, oh, like a pet oh, over well, here. He's, I'm if you little. put him in the middle, then. <laughs> no, it wouldn't, you know, it wouldn't help. It wouldn't yeah. help. Maybe if they didn't put me next to massive people. See, I am normal height. You guys are tall. And this is our pet, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> Be here all season. It's like a uh, pet dog coming in. So, guys, this is kind of cool. Every single game day. Now we're going to have this Twitter show. We're going to come to you live on Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, the ESPN app. And if you haven't already, you can authenticate it on your cable provider or with your cable provider. And you can watch us. You can watch game day, everything. Can we go and like ruin Kirk's Sports Center section right now? We should probably start fun. doing things like that. That would be awesome. Just rolling up to Kirk. Look at it. He's on, he's on camera right now. <laughs> it is important to note if we're going to do that, I should not be the one to do that. Like, that's no. a way to make it my last day. Like, no. you should I'll do take care that. Of that. Yeah. I you actually wouldn't do, do that either. I was a little afraid when I stood with the Kirk fathead. Remember when I had the it's Mickey and Minnie fat? <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Body now shaming. we're trending on Body Twitter. Shaming. Now we're not just on Twitter. Kirk Herb Street is fat. Maria Taylor quote. <laughs> wow, from the guy that hasn't had a donut in like 18 years. <laughs> right? I, mean, I actually made him have a donut Maria's one had, time. Maria's had plenty for all of us. Yes, so you're welcome. Uh, wow. Okay, week one. Give me your, your biggest headline that you're looking out for week one, David. I, I, think it, I, think it'll, I think it'll be fun to watch the Pac-12 versus the SEC and yep. the overreaction regardless of whatever direction direction it goes. Love it's it. literally going to be Pac-12 sucks and they're, they're terrible and they, blah, blah, blah. They're dead or the SEC is once again king. But did you see that kick last night by Nevada? I did. By the way, just, um, you wanna, awesome. We already have some headlines that have happened. Let's take you to a, a Nevada kicker who it was awesome. should be pretty excited because remember they were down by yeah. 17 points and then Carson Strong had to go out. Okay, listen, oh. this is your chance to beat Purdue. Can oh. you hit it? 56 yards. Boom. 56 Done. yards. I mean. He nailed Nailed it. The Wolfpack wins it 34 to 31 over the Boilermakers. And guess what? Carson got a great surprise after the game. And last but not least, Steve <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> hey, He's from Vacaville. He's from Vacaville. Congratulations. Outstanding game ball and scholarship. Yeah. Yeah. So, so look at that. 
a scholarship after you get a 56 yard First kick. of all, yeah. I, I can never see enough scholarship videos. I, 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 I like all of those that they put out. Yeah. Some people might, if you get tired by those and you don't have a heart that's your own problem, yeah. I love watching kids. I like, okay, what was the, the pizza delivery one? Have you seen that one? Yes. Yeah, all, that all was of them are one great. Of, yeah. like, I, there's the creativity of them, too. The coaches are getting better at finding ways to uncover them. But if we're waiting for somebody to earn a scholarship and a kicker, especially, doing that, a 56 yard field goal to win the game, like, if that doesn't get you a scholarship, what will, right? I mean, that's that's the big moment. Yeah, absolutely nothing. Um, okay, let's talk about what you didn't see, maybe, because out in Corvallis at Oregon State, you didn't see any coaches in the booth after the third quarter because there was an elevator issue. David, this could be, this is like the cutting room floor for you had one job, right? <laughs> yes, this has to be in it for sure. Like, hey, what, what are you seeing out there on the field? <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. Y'all, the game had to be up. delayed. This is not a joking uh, matter, though. Being stuck, I've been stuck in an elevator with big guys. Like very, when, when I was touring the music, that we feel? put all the gear and we put all of us in one elevator. We did not pay attention to the uh, weight restraints. Yeah. We got stuck, and we were stuck there. I mean, for hours while they tried to figure out how to get individual pieces of gear out of the elevator. The little guys go out last too. Like, the, <laughs> how does so. that work? Like, no, no. Yes. I'm the one that's like crammed in here, sweating in between Can you people, breathe thinking the I'm gonna whole time? die. Like, do you feel like oxygen's going away? I I'm, really I'm not know. kidding. It was like three hours. We were in an elevator for three hours, just sweating profusely. It is not. It's not pretty. I would more than likely actually just take a nap. Probably. There's a joke to be had there with Oregon State. What? What? Like they kind of been stuck in an elevator for years with trying to the football program up. trying to go up. I'm not doing that with you. I'm not doing that. I'm cool with the Beavers. I don't, want any, okay. I don't want let's any static. Let's, let's talk I don't about want no the game. Yeah, let's talk about the game. Let's talk about <laughs> what happened on the field. Chubba uh, Hubbard. You had an outstanding night, didn't yeah. you? Uh, 221 yards. Good day at the office. Three touchdowns, 26 carries. Yeah. Cowboys get the win, 52 to 36. Hey, Sean Gleason comes in as the offensive coordinator for Oklahoma State. Going to be fun to watch this offense morph and change, but it's pretty clear running the football. Chubba Hubbard, you knew coming into the season was going to be a really good back. I'd say that's a pretty good start. I just like that you're trying to throw shade at everybody. You're just trying to stir things up. Equally. <laughs> equal equal shade. How about this? It's the year of the quarter. I mean, running back, Jonathan Taylor. How and he's the this? best. Yeah. A hundred and how many yards? 83 total yards, four touchdowns. Not bad. Yeah, but Wisconsin's still going to have to get competent quarterback play at some point if they want to be better than just very good. There's no doubt. The biggest thing about this game, Jonathan Taylor, first of all, in the first two seasons, nobody in the history of college football has rushed for more yards. Mm. Just think about that. Yeah. In the history of college football, Last night, catching the ball in the backfield was the biggest surprise for me. And this guy last year came on the scene, Travis Etienne. You saw him get 205 the other night. Well, 90 of it right here on this one play was just, this guy's okay. jets and burners. The most nice. impressive part of that was he fumbled in the first quarter. The first thing he did was lay the ball on the deck and then, of course, goes off for 200. I mean, 205 yards on 12 carries. Yeah. Like, when you think about 12 carries, for, I, I think that's pretty good. It's not bad. I mean, that's okay. Tecmo Bowl numbers. That's Tecmo Bowl that, just yes. running that's around. 17 yards per carry. I did my research. Somebody told you that, right? Yeah, somebody no, told no, no. you that. She did her research. <laughs> I, I have a that, producer man. in my ear. Okay, out of all those performances that we've seen so far, what impresses you most? I, you know, Travis Etienne, I think, impresses me the most because, frankly, Trevor Lawrence was a little rusty at the beginning of the game. Yeah. And you mentioned Jonathan Taylor's incredible production. We're used to that. We're, yeah. we're used to him having to carry the load. Clemson was supposed to come out and be dynamic out of the gates. I think it's going to be fine. Look, it, be real. But yeah. Trevor Lawrence was rusty, and Etienne wasn't. That was the difference. What, what you haven't seen from Jonathan Taylor, though, is Kevin the ball in the backfield. It's been non-existent. Two catches last night in the first half with 48 yards and two touchdowns. He's, if they use him out of that, in that capacity too, yeah. that's a guy that could win the Heisman Trophy. I mean, he should. He, he's that kind of good. And what you have to love about Jonathan Taylor is like, everybody knows that he is going to have yeah. the ball 26 times and you have to find a way to stop him and nobody could. Where Travis, it's like, listen, T. Higgins might get a ball. Trevor you know, Lawrence is my quarterback. Tra right, like there's a lot going on and he's still great. No yeah. offense, but like Jonathan Taylor has had to like carry a load that no There's one no has had to carry. No and doubt. that comes back to my point on Wisconsin. Like I think the frustrating thing, they're going to look back at this era of football and say, my God, we had a dynamic runner like this and we weren't able to find any level of competent offense from the rest of the team. I mean, that team should be better given the production of Jonathan Taylor. Let me ask you this. We keep talking about, oh, it's the year of the quarterback, year of the quarterback, which, again, Justin Herbert, Tua Tonga Vailoa, Trevor Lawrence makes sense. Jake Fromm. But after seeing this, I mean, uh -oh, it might be the year uh -oh. of the running back. Uh oh. Why is everybody booing? And by the way, he does this every week. Oh, kiss the helmet. It's kiss a tradition. The helmet. It gets all the boos, gets all the cheers. Does anybody wipe down the helmet first? Like, I'm not a germaphobe. I'll eat Skittles off the floor. I'm just wondering, like, at the end of the day, and I know you don't eat Skittles at all, but, like, well, who know, cares? Well, I'm just curious. 
Why are you worried about the germs? I'm just, I'm not, but some people are. So I'm just wondering, of course, well, I was like, that's you know fault. him. Is he particular about, does somebody wipe down the helmet first? Or does he Corso just... cares about nothing. That's he doesn't nothing. bothers Corso. It's okay. a remarkable gift. As long as he, he gets to do the headgear, Corso's a happy man. <laughs> All right. Meetings well, on Fridays listen. until the headgear comes on, until the headgear gets there safe. He's like, I've always want, you know what? I'm going to ask you guys a question. We're just behind the scenes of game day, right? Do you have any indication ahead of time which uh, which uh, mascot has yeah, going do you on? Yeah, let me tell you. Well, no, I he just wonder know. if you well, know. It's Oregon. I do know. It's Oregon. I do know. Don't you feel like if the duck is don't involved, he's going to put the duck head on? That's just like a personal. He loves. He just the loves ducks. the duck. He's a big fan he of the duck. Loves the duck. Well, the duck head looks awesome. Like I, I'd wear the duck head. Like, that's what we should do. We should try to guess and like keep track of it as the. See who's right. Yeah. Oh, that's good. So those are the things that you're going to see guess. here <laughs> on Countdown to Game Day, uh, presented by Coke. Make sure you share a Coke, and we are coming to you live on Twitter. Uh, from Sundance Square, we're waiting for college game day to get underway, and this is going to be a weekly routine for us. We hope that you continue to join us either on YouTube, Facebook, or Twitter. And um, we are here because the fans show up. That's the whole point of college game day. Yeah. And they put in a lot of effort into making these signs, guys. Like, honestly, I see some of the coolest slogans, some of the most creative things I've ever seen. I, uh, I, learned, I learned a valuable lesson this morning. You can't bring markers in. So there were people that were outside that, uh -huh. were, uh, that were finishing oh, this at the end of the day. that was a great game, by the way. Duck Hunt was that. a phenomenal game. You're a video game guy, Pollock, oh, so I appreciate that. Guy. But you're too young for Duck Hunt. No, like, I remember weird. Duck Hunt. I played Duck Hunt. I remember like, Duck, Duck Hunt, too. Hater. Really? Had a yes. little orange gun, right? Yes. yes. Okay. okay. Yeah. Orange and gray. I mean, the sign game is is strong. Also, the Oregon fan base is strong. Like, I'm amazed by how many Oregon if fans have been here since this, last night. Dyer was down. Dyer was down. Wow. <laughs> that is a Drake reference for anyone who didn't get it. Yes. Yeah, and, got it. And Michael Dyer, 2010. Okay, so oh, look good, at us. Together, good, good we rise. Yes. What's our next sign? What do we got? On, on air during commercials. <laughs> right. awesome. Okay, well, I, I, I guess go I'm going to go talk to some people that made signs. So we're going to figure out. I mean, they're paying attention to Lee Corso, but we're going to try and figure out the proof. Oh, okay. I mean, like, uh, let, let's see. Go sports. Go sports. Like, that's all you got. That's all you got. You, how much time and energy did you put into go sports? Way too much. Way too much. Go. Was there like a groupie? I mean, you guys are TCU fans. A lot of TCU fans, by the way, repping, trying to say, hey, paying attention to the wrong team. Go sports. Was that like, did a whole group? Did you come up with Go Sports, or was that your own? Uh, I think some of these sports are underrepresented, and I think some are, I don't know, dude. It's just sports, bro. That's all I got. I, I got nothing. I got nothing. They're, they're, we've also yeah, got championship belts. Beverages. Just say no to quack. Just say no to quack is quack this spectacular. I mean, I, like, I mean, listen. I mean. Uh, that, 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 that's, I like just saying no to quack, but you know, I can't, I can't get in the way of people doing real this, work. What about this Auburn guy right here? It looks like he's got the belt and the glove. Yeah. Okay. So talk to me about the belt and the glove. Well, this is the Auburn infinity gauntlet. This is the end game tonight. We're going to finish this. We started this nine years ago. You want the strap. We've got the strap. Come and get it. See, this is the level of trash talking. This is the end game. I mean, game. I'm just saying. It is week hey, one. Did you did, did you, you bar that from an Alabama fan? I'm being asked. Did you? Did, oh, <laughs> Pollock, uh, David Pollock said this. Not me. He's got a really big oh, fist. Oh, oh, don't, His quote don't was, fingers. "Did you uh, did you bar borrow this from an Alabama, Alabama fan?" Oh, no. That ain't right, Pollock. Oh. I said, let the record show I said that, even though I'm here to take the blow for he the. put it on me. I don't know what he's talking about. Wait, 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 Paul. The here. little guy's supposed to trash talk. The big guy's supposed to back it up. This is like basic 101 <laughs> trash talking. I can't believe this. Uh, oh, wow. Sleeve test filled, uh, unfilled. Uh, uh, sleeve test. Uh, yeah. um, any other? Uh, what? This, this makes me very uncomfortable. This makes me very uncomfortable. I, I, I don't know what to say. Look, uh, 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 speaking of Oregon, Justin Herbert, quarterback for Oregon, we had the opportunity to take a little ride with him. Uh, check this out. Wow, that's uncomfortable. Our day with the King Duck, and that is Justin Herbert, their fantastic quarterback who decided to withstand the NFL for one more season and come back and join his teammates. You are from Eugene. Did right. you ever think about going somewhere else? Um, before Oregon came around, I was going to go play football with my brother at Montana State. Didn't really have a whole lot of opportunities to play football, so when Oregon came around. I knew I was going to go there. Do you remember the first time you heard from somebody from Oregon that, like, you were finally on their radar and they started to recruit you? Um, I went and watched a practice one day, 
but my name tag was spelled wrong. Justin? How do you spell Justin? Herbert. Uh, it was Hebert. So yeah, you can get less. Do you still have that name tag? Um, I think my mom might have thrown it out. <laughs> I would have held on to that yeah. one. Marcus Mariota lives right there. Uh huh. There. Oh, is that where he? Does he train here? In the... I'm just trying to. Do you interact with him much? Does he help you much? Yeah, when he comes back, we we talk and and uh, I think it's more outside of football too. I I don't want to pressure him. He, he, season of football, so. I know, that's right. All right, Justin, first game of the season is against Auburn. I mean, what are the expectations out of the gate, neutral site, and you know it's going to be a mm -hmm. top 25 matchup? It's a great opportunity for us. Um, we're, we're fired up. We're excited to be to be put in that situation, and Auburn's a great, great team. they got a great defense. They're really well coached. I was going to say, do you know about their D-line? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we do. They're, uh, <laughs> they're physical, and, and they're going to play some great, great defense, so we're going to need everything we got for them. Awesome. Thank you for your time. We know you're going to be pulled a lot of direction. Yeah. No worries. Thank you so much. Of course. That was actually kind of fun. Yeah! I'll, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Oh, that was so much fun. Listen, we were so hyped just because Justin Herb was like, I kind of had fun a little bit. When he got in the car, he was like, what is happening to me? He's a quiet kid. He's a quiet kid. He's boys. Uh, but yeah, that was part of the Taylor Road Trip. Holly and I, seven camps, seven days, and one of them was stopping by Justin Herbert. And we made it the first stop because, I mean, he came back. Like, he grew up two miles away from that stadium. Like, That's we ran into his dad on the way to dropping him back off at camp. It's kind of cool to watch him solidify. Hey, you're... I can't even I can't even help it. What's up? Look at that. Friends? Is this a turnover chain? Oh, <laughs> wow. I'm, I'm telling sorry. you. Was that blast? Did he just hit you? He did. Did he oh, did you just oh, touch Maria? Give me a kiss. The no, horse. It was up. the horse. You better give her a kiss and make it right. You better make it right. Thank you. <laughs> better make it right. Wow, that was slam you. I will slam you, was, was, oh, yeah. if you <laughs> touch my girl like that again. I'm just saying. You see that? But we do like your style, though. Everything that's happening here, Dewey, Dewey, Fort Worth. Dewey, it's a little I, '80s wrestling, no, though. Like, I mean, I like the, the fringe. It. I'm, I'm wow. just saying. Oh. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm just. I, I don't know. Like, the course, I was gonna come down here and get you for talking yeah, smack. That, to that the is duck. that is fair. No, see, this is the way it's supposed to go. I talked smack. David backs back it up. up. I got your back. That's the way. Do you? I don't. I, I don't trust that. Yes, at all. I'm gonna talk a lot of trash. Thanks for stopping by. I do want to ask you guys about Herbert because you mentioned he came back. I think it's significant to note last year's completion percentage dropped. It's also significant to note that under under pressure, his completion percentage wasn't good. good last year. Now he's going to face an Auburn defensive line that is one of the best at getting pressure to the quarterback. So what do you expect from Herbert tonight? Justin Herbert misses too many free throws. He misses too many throws that are wide open that you're supposed to make. And I don't know that you can correct that. I don't know that your accuracy is going to grow that much from one year to the next. I've never seen substantial jumps. What he can do is run. He's an, he's an incredible athlete. People don't realize 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, the dude can fly. He's got a cannon for an arm. So can he make those easy plays? Can he make those plays that are there to be had? Can he make plays under pressure? We saw a lot also versus ranked opponents, he was really good and had a lot of really good moments. But he'll have to improve. He'll have to get better. That's why he's back. And, and listen, what you don't see in college football a lot of times is a love and a passion for your school. And he's got How all that. How cool is that to see? Bo Nix on the other side for Auburn, mm -hmm. same thing. Grew up wanting to be an Auburn quarterback. Like, that is rare and so cool to see guys like that that really I buy into my team. It's yeah. not just about the NFL. It's about my dudes around me. So kudos to him for coming back. And Since now you brought it up. Can I tell you the awesome best story thing. I heard this week about Bo Nix? Oh, we, yeah. We talked maybe like Tuesday. And, you know, dad was like a coach at Georgia Tech, an assistant coach for years. And so he was in Atlanta. He used to go to those games. But every night, like after Auburn would win, mom would let the kids go in the backyard and roll the trees because they couldn't be at Toomer's Corner. So he's like specifically remembers, like, I remember like Auburn beat Georgia and we went in the backyard. And mom oh, yeah. was like, yeah, we can roll the trees. And that's the kind of stuff, like, that's how in his blood it is. Like, but that's not normal. Like, most of right. these kids nowadays are growing up like, where can I go to make the money? And, yeah. and that's fine. I'm yeah. not knocking it. But I'm saying the love of their team mm -hmm. usually comes a little bit down the list. So yeah. it's kind of cool to have two guys squaring off like that. All right, cool. I got something here. Coke would like to share a stat with fans. It's Auburn's Bo Nix. He'll be the first true freshman quarterback to start the season opener for an SEC school since Tennessee's Schaefer did it. And, yeah, 04, yeah. look at you. So let me ask you about that, that stat because I think that's interesting, especially tonight playing at AT&T Stadium. Mm -hmm. You're in this massive stadium. It's a strange – like, you're talking about somebody who, what, six months ago was worried about a proposal, right? Yeah. Like, so what's that difference really like? I mean, Pollock, you, you from somebody that played in the 
these huge environments. Yeah. What's it really like for a kid that steps in true freshman and has to handle not only the offense, but just the experience in the environment? Well, and, and it, the one thing you, you have to do is learn how to be a leader. Like, that's the hardest thing for your guys. Well, you just showed up. Like, and listen, he came up before the Music City Bowl mm -hmm. long time ago. So he's been there and they've heard his voice, right. which is great. Been through spring, understands that stuff. Mm -hmm. But he um, he's going to take some lumps. And you got to realize that. The good thing about him is Gus Malzahn's calling plays again. Yeah. Offensive line all entirely back. Running backs experience. Wide receivers. They're as good around him as they've been in a while. So they're not going to depend on Bo Nix. But when he makes those mistakes and he does love Auburn so much, yeah. you want to go back and make up for it. No, also, can't do that. You know, you got you got to stay like this. And you got to remember too, like this is a kid. He played for his dad. He grew up as he's a coach's kid. Like he loves film. He was like, yeah, since sixth grade, we've been watching film with my dad. That's what I do. I've been to practices. Like I've seen how quarterbacks prepare. I've sat through meetings. So some of the things it's going to be. I mean, from a preparation standpoint, at least he's used to it. Obviously, the first time you get hit, it's a little bit of a different story. I agree with all of that. Uh, and I obviously. You can look at me and see I'm not a player. But the only thing I can relate it to is a musician, right? And I grew up like going to shows at Madison Square Garden. The first time I played Madison Square Garden was animal. the worst show I ever had because Aww. I couldn't control the adrenaline. As a grown yeah. man, I couldn't control yeah. the adrenaline for that. So all of the things you're talking about that make him a great fit for Auburn is also why I do expect some level of, oh my God, I've waited my whole life for this moment. Now how do you control that adrenaline in that moment? But the good thing is he's state. playing against this other scrub quarterback on the other side. So uh, Yeah, it'll oh, be wow. easy. It'll be yeah. great. And it's not a lot of eyes on it. Like no, college game not there. It's not a big deal. No, small. Um, okay, so those two quarterbacks Quarterbacks are all in for their team and legacy building and staying in one spot. On the other hand, there's a lot of quarterbacks that have transferred around. And Fitzy, you kind of take us on a, a merry-go-round. Yeah, I, look, this is confusing, but fear not. <laughs> I've got you covered. Check it out. We figured it out. Let's talk transfers, and we'll start all the way at the top. Number one, Clemson former starter Kelly Bryant is now the starter at Mizzou. His former backup, Hunter Johnson, is the starter at Northwestern. Number two, Alabama former starter Jalen Hurts heads over to Oklahoma. Number four, where he's the starter there. That's significant. Why? Because Oklahoma's had two consecutive Heisman winning quarterbacks that were, oh, I don't know, transfers. Georgia, number three. They send Jacob Eason all the way to the West Coast where he starts for number 13, Washington. In the meantime, Justin Fields leaves Georgia, goes over to Ohio State. So Ohio State says, hey, let's have more fun. We'll get more quarterbacks in this. They send Tate Martell down to Miami. They also send Matthew Baldwin over to TCU. And in the process, they decide, why not add another one? Gunnar Hoke, coolest name of all of them, goes from Kentucky over to Ohio State. Not to be outdone, we are not done yet. Let's remember LSU starter Joe Burrow used to start or used to play for Ohio State. So Michigan says we want in on the fun too. Shea Patterson, former starting quarterback for Ole Miss, is now in Michigan, and his former backup, Brandon Peters, is now in, in, in Illinois. On top of all of that, number nine Notre Dame former starter Brandon Wimbush heads down to number 17 UCF. You get all that? <laughs> That's impressive. <laughs> that was a First lot. take. You got that in the first take, Fitzy. Yeah, ish, ish, <laughs> ish. Like, yeah. You know what though? Like I forgot things like Joe Burrow. Yes. Like where did you even start playing college football at? Like some of the yep. names you completely forget by the time that they've moved. Well, once or twice. Welcome to the new college football world that yeah. we live in. Is that the new normal? I mean, that's a real question. Like we started, Nick, some people started nicknaming Miami transfer you this year because of the number of transfers they were recruiting. Like, yeah. is this the new normal for college football coaches? Yep. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, yes. So then, then the follow-up question. Or fortunately. Well, I unfortunately. Guess, I think it's fortunate. Why, why? The horse. Why the horse. is it fortunate? Because the quarterback position is so unique that you don't have, it's not a D-line, like you can't rotate players in and out and get reps. Like if you want to play in college and you just want to play the game, you don't have to start, but you want to play the game and get reps, then you might have to leave where you started. Well, you and should I'm not do saying you should just sit, like who wants to just sit and wait and wait and wait if someone's better than you? Like he's better than me. I got to go to UCF. This dude beat me out. Like I still want to play college ball. For a lot of guys, this is like the height of their whole career. I agree. This is their last chance to play at an elite level and you want to yep. play the game. Games. Agreed. And, and, and those situations I love. Mm -hmm. I love grad transfers mm -hmm. that have those opportunities. They get those degree and get to move elsewhere. I, I love when you see people get to uh, move elsewhere and they have to sit out a year. Mm -hmm. I don't love when we decide that when we pick and choose who gets to play and who doesn't get to play by some arbitrary system that's stupid. Mm -hmm. I don't like that. So There's, there's also if, an arbitrary system that allows coaches to, to go whatever whenever they, they want. want. Whenever they want. Like, yeah. why are coaches held to a lesser standard than players on loyalty? Coaches are Danny also Diaz paid, 17 so. days as the head coach at Temple. 
17. It was, 17. It was very successful, though. 17 days, yeah. He didn't lose any games. He didn't lose any games. Any games. So Zero. all those quarterbacks spent more than 17 days at their school, so they are allowed to enter the transfer portal. I think that should be the rule. Did you spend 17 days? Wow. That is Okay, so with that, <laughs> with that, then which one do you – like, to me, Jalen Hurts is in the best situation, right? He's going to Oklahoma. They have back-to-back -back Heisman winning trophy uh, – Heisman trophy winning quarterbacks that were transfers. Like, Jalen Hurts it is in the best well. situation. <laughs> but you – uh, wait, what? Sorry, you Obby was dancing. I couldn't. He, he, you can just go get him. He's in the best situation out of all the transfers. Justin Fields. I mean, you got a brand new – I think Ryan Day is an amazing offensive coordinator. And I don't know, like, obviously we haven't seen him as a head coach at Ohio State, but he does a really good job with the tools that he's given. And I think Justin Fields is great. I think he's talented. So Jake Fromm had the experience, and he couldn't beat him out. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it comes down to that. But I think it's going to work out at Ohio State. I think it fits his skill set better, yeah. too. Yeah. The system he's going to go to, he's going to run the football a lot. And that dude's a grown-up. I mean, he is – He's huge. Six, he was three, a lot bigger than I thought. Yeah, he's a big – and he can move. He's got a strong arm. I think Ryan Day's proven what his, his offensive systems. He's going to – I think it'll be more JT Barrett than it was Dwayne Haskins. Yeah. And I think because of that, he's going to put up some video game numbers. So is that your pick? Yeah. Oh, all right. Well, fine. No, I was, was just your, talking was about it for no reason. I, I, I went Jalen Hurts. I thought maybe you were just doubling down with more analysis because you're just that because, professional. <laughs> so you're saying her analysis wasn't good enough and no, I didn't saying that overcompensate? I think my analysis was so persuasive that Dave was like, you know what, let me just you roll with what? that. That sounds good. <laughs> Uh, like, remember one thing. If we fight this year, remember this. This is important. I was a fiddle player, right? You kick my butt, you get no straight cred. I get one hit in. Man, you, you got to say that you got hit by a run play. when you get that hit in. Oh, I, I can't fast. run very fast, but I'll still take the street cred. Like, I'll get shirts made that said, better I hit power. Better put up, you get to grab a chair. Oh, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Grab a chair. Some 80s wrestling. Yeah. Something I'm heavy. in. I'm All in. All right. Well, these guys diffuse their situation. Um, why don't we check out what Fitzy did when he caught up with a couple of fans and, and ribs, apparently. Because that's, it's Texas. It's Texas. It all comes down to this, and that means we settle it the way we do in Texas with a ribbing contest, but we got a crowd. Let's go. You got one minute. Are you guys ready? One minute. Three, two, one. Oh, they are eating. They are eating. I can't hear myself thinking this boy. Oh, Harlan. Harlan is making it happen. Harlan is making it. Look at that. Look at that. Don't choke him. Don't choke him. Oh, meticulous here. He's meticulous. The glasses have come off. That's how you know it's real. The glasses have come off. The glasses have come off. They are not going fast enough. Oh, he's getting it. He's getting you right down to 20 seconds. 20 seconds. 20 seconds. Come on, guys. You can do it. Push through. Oh, we are watching it happen. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. It's not even close. It's not even close. Harlan is your winner, Auburn. Hey, he almost gave it up. Auburn almost gave it up. You see him? He, went, oh, yeah. he did. Yeah. The most impressive thing was the first rib. Like, you knew it was over when Bistro for Oregon was, like, lightly, politely chomping on the rib. Right. And then Harlan just took one and just, like, just oh. boned it and you then got threw a clean it down. a precursor to what we're going to see tonight. I, I'm not saying all that, but I knew for a wow. fact when you said rib eating, it's like the South wins. Yeah, the that's South. probably a fair point. <laughs> right. I'm not getting that. He's like, I do organic things. Like, we barely eat meat out there in Oregon. I don't know why you have these ribs in front of me. Hey, so I should be from Oregon. <laughs> yeah. So David Pollock is from Oregon, and he would lose any rib eating contest that you could possibly have. I will say one of the more uh, interesting things when we were out getting the fans and doing this, there are a ton of Oregon fans here. I mean, a, a ton. ton. I this. was stunned. You guys I, I was, you do that? Is there any reaction to that? No? No, no. Nothing. They're not. Nothing. They're not, they're not watching. It. Like, there's, there's a reaction. Look at that. Look at that jersey over there. Yeah. Maria. Look at that jersey over there. She's giving a heart to you. That's a Pollock. Yeah. <laughs> look at that. About? Wow. That's a dying breed. That's a dinosaur. Uh, so uh, it just surprised me last night because even when we were getting a group uh, together no, to like to, to cheer them on, it was so much easier to find or Oregon fans were everywhere. Auburn fans just weren't out. We've been here several years in in these contest where it's half and half, mm -hmm. whether it be Michigan, Alabama, LSU years ago, 
It's, and usually the South teams overwhelm the state. Yeah, but here? Here, it won't be that. It'll Oregon be, wins be it. close to 50-50. Yeah. No, I, I think Auburn will still have more fans in the end, but I think it's going to be close, which isn't normal because obviously Oregon's coming from all the way across the country. All right, guys, we've got about 90 seconds till college game day officially kicks off. I mean, first of all, we actually have to, like, work in a little bit. I don't know if you're ready. Do you, do you know what you're talking about? Have you seen Whatever. a rundown? <laughs> Listen, the, the truth about David, he never knows what's going on. <laughs> but hey, we figure it out by the time we put a mic in front I'm of good. us. I mean, I'm just saying, like, y'all go work. I'm just going to go hang out at Starbucks, put my feet up, watch a little football. Like, my, my day is going to be basically. Well, you're over there. Make yourself useful. Go ahead and get us something to drink. <laughs> wow. Wow. You know what? Maybe you'd know what you were talking about if you didn't spend the whole production meeting just walking around the room eating fruit while everybody else is working. Yep. I'm sorry. That's we're going to be... fight before the it end works. of the, the year. The entire season. Lose. Remember, make sure you join us here. For Count Down to Game Day, presented by Coke. Uh, you hear Reese Davis' voice? He's already hyping up the crowd. Shh, you listen. And before you know it, it's over, baby. So let's soak it up and have a good time. Our fearless leader, let's go. Oh, Reese Davis. We follow him in the battle any day. Any day. <laughs> he gives us those pep, those pep talks too, right? You guys, uh, you guys got like a big, uh, big thought for like we've already talked about Herbert and the challenges he faces. I mean, you got all 13 of my thoughts out of my head already. You're good. Well, that's probably fair. I mean, you, you did. It, it's I got nothing, David. I got huge, nothing. just a, a huge week for the Pac-12. Like this is a bigger game for the Pac-12 than it is for Auburn and the SEC. It's a huge statement opportunity. And it's huge because it's week one. Are you ready, college football? No more weddings on the weekend. Time to overreact. Time to live it up large. College game day coming your way on ESPN.